Before we start this video, a large thank you to Riley, Eduardo, Eggy, Lars, Philip, Stratos, Fallen, Mesa, and Bob for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And as always, an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support to the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, my friend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. So I have here the Sinti Modular Heroes model. If you are using this model, make sure, or any Sinti model, make sure you used a model from the fixed scale folder. It's very important. Uh, a lot of Sinti models are broken. Their transforms are broken. So if you play animations with a model of broken transforms, you're going to get some weird behavior. The model is going to contort or the animations aren't going to play as they should. So if you are using a Sinti model, again, use one from the fixed scale folder. Now, I'm choosing this model because it has a lot of modular parts and it's great to showcase the functionality uh, of an armor system because I can really show you how I'm able to toggle on and off multiple pieces at once, but you don't need to use this model. You don't need to use any model. Don't feel like you need to right now. You can skip this part for now. Um, if you do use a model, all you need to do is make sure that all the different armor pieces or body pieces have their own parent object like heads, knees, elbow pads, you know, uh, torsos, etc., etc. So I'm going to quickly swap over my player uh, prefab to this new model by just copying all these components and pasting them. That includes all of these damage gliders. I'm going to set the layers to damageable character again. Make sure you don't forget to do all that stuff. I'm going to skip all that though. I sent to watch it. So here I am now with the completed model. I'm now going to replace uh, the prefab right here under my player. And that looks good. I'm going to drag it now back into the player prefab section of my network manager. If I jump into the game here now, you can see, cool, it is working. Now, this is, there's no errors where our weapons are loading in fine. Everything is good. That's great. So I'm going to go to the player equipment manager here, and I'm going to go to the male equipment models. And we're going to, in this video, we're going to make it so we're able to equip full helmets and chest plates. Uh, so you can see if I hide these game objects, upper arm, lower arm, obviously it's going to hide an entire object. So... What I've done here now is just I've made a bunch of variables for these, and you can pause it here now. I'm trying to save the video some time. So for every section, hips, legs, upper arm, right arm, lower arm, I'm going to make its own variable of array and its own object to get the array. So in the last video, you remember we got the male full helmets by taking a parent object and getting every child in that object, making it into a list, and then changing that list into an array. We're doing the exact same thing here now with the lower left arms, upper left arms, lower right, upper right. So you can see here now these, these are all the objects we're going to work with with this video. Now I'm going to copy and paste it and change it from male to female, just so it's there. Um, so the support will be there for females as well. Now, again, you don't need to do this with every object. If you have less objects than me or you're working with a different model, that's totally fine. But I'm just going to cover all of it in all of its intricacies to try to be as general as possible when it comes to making the system. So we're going to go here now and we're going to add a uh, another field here. So we have male and female models. We're going to call this general equipment models or unisex equipment models. Now, why is this one different? Well, if we look at our model, we do have a section for male and female, but we also have a section that uh, is kind of over both. So this is your back accessories. And again, I put the variables here on screen. You can pause it. Um, but if I just go over to the game object here now and show you, we have the following uh, head attachments, back attachments, shoulder attachments. You can see these are the shoulder pieces. So these are going to be the same uh, regardless of uh, us using the male or female portion of this model. Uh, so these are general. So again, I won't uh, make you watch me type all these out. I'm also going to hide these variables in the inspector because they don't need to be visible anymore. We were just making sure they were working when we made them. Uh, so I'm going to save that now. So the only things in the inspector that should be visible are things I need to fill in myself or drag in. So I'm just going to save that. Now, we have all these cool variables now. So um, you can name these whatever you want. And I'll show you why I named them the way I did. So if we go to our uh, general objects here, we have head coverings. We have base hair, no facial hair, and no hair. So no hair, I've called hoods. So head coverings, no hair means you're going to disable your hair when you activate these objects. Uh, that's all it means. So anything under this category, will, you will disable your hair when you're activating them. So I just called it hoods. Face covers is kind of like um, masks. So no facial hair on that one. That's what they have it called. I'm going to rename half helmets to hats because half helmets is a little bit confusing. It doesn't sound that uh, descriptive. So hats, meaning that you're going to be able to keep your hair uh, active when you use this object. So nothing's actually being disabled. And again, you might just want to disable everything all the time anyway when you're uh, toggling these armor pieces. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm doing this specifically for the model because it's what works for the model. So you may need to make adjustments if your model is different than this one, obviously. So I have hats, hoods, and face covers. Cool. Now the rest are pretty self-explanatory. Helmet accessories is helmet accessories. Back accessories is the back attachment. Right shoulder is right shoulder, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure in this variable you're getting the object 
that is the parent of all the uh, the child objects. So you can see I didn't put in all O2 head attachment. I put in helmet because helmet is the parent object that houses all of the child objects like these that can be activated. That's very important. So again, all these variables do, just to go over it one more time, is we're using these variables as a parent to acquire every child under their transform, and that will give us a, uh, a list of models, which we then turn into our array. And then we're using that array to actually toggle on and off these different uh, armor models via variables on our armor sets. So that's all these things are. They're just ways, they're just convenient ways to get these entire lists. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because let's say you want to add armor to your model while you're developing your game. You don't want to have to come back and keep manually dragging stuff in, in your prefab. That's going to get really tedious. So when we have these variables uh, set up like this, all you do is they just get auto grabbed on a wake um, because we just, again, make that list and turn it into an array. So it's, it's a lot more convenient. Now let's go to the onload head equipment models. You can see here we have some pseudo code, re-enable head and re-enable hair. Um, and we also need to add a couple more for each loops here. Um, and we need to disable the female full helmets and we need to disable the hats, the hoods and the masks. So remember, the first thing we do when we're loading a piece of head equipment is unloading any old model that may be on the head already. So anything that could be on the head, you want to unload it. So for us, that's male full helmets, female full helmets, hats, which is general and shared by both, face covers, and then we have hoods. And this might be different for you depending on how many different accessories you, ha you have in your model, but anything that can be equipped on the face or the head, uh, disable it here. So I'm also going to say helmet accessories because that counts as well. And I think we are good. All right, so re-enable the head and re-enable the hair. So I can make a function called enable head, and then I can make a function called enable hair just below this. And we can do that. So let's do that right now. I'm just going to come down here, minimize all these functions, and I'm going to make a comment here, enable body features. And I'm gonna make a private void, enable head, and then a private void for enable hair. Now, all this is going to do is we're going to have a default head object for our character, obviously, and uh, the hair object, depending on which one you pick at the character creation, it's just going to re-enable both of these features. So I'm actually going to put this in the player.player .player body manager, which doesn't exist right now. So, but we're going to pretend it does. So you're going to get an error, paste this here, player.player .player body manager, enable head and hair. Let's copy these two functions and delete them from here. And let's go make the player body manager. Now, normally I would make this derive from a character body manager, but I can't think of a use case currently where another character that's an AI would need this. Um, so I'm not gonna do that for now. So we're just gonna have a player body manager as its own class. It's not going to derive from anything. I'm going to delete the start and update functionality and put in a namespace as is per tradition. If you can think of a use case in your project where you want some uh, shared logic between a player body manager and an AI character body manager, then by all means create a base class. But for now, I'm just gonna not do that. So I'm going to make a public void enable head and a public void enable hair. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to make some pseudo code here. We want to enable the head object and enable any facial features like eyebrows, lips, nose, ears, whatever you have in your model. Um, so let's make two headers, one for male, one for female. And again, just to save some time, I'm going to, here we go, paste the variables in. So now you can see, and this is what requires of my model. Now I will make some comments so it's very clear. The male head, this is the default head model when on equipping armor. So if you take off everything, obviously there's a there's a default head model. This is going to be that. This is the default upper body models when you want to equip armor. So think of your chest, upper right arm, upper left arm. This is your default arm models when you want to equip like gloves. So think of your lower uh, left and right arm and your hands. And then these are the default legs when you want to equip your leg armor. So your hips and your left and right leg. Now eyebrows, that's, uh, you know, that is the eyebrows and the hair. That's pretty self-explanatory. And the females are all the same parts. I won't make the comments here twice because it's the same thing. So for enabling a head, all we have to do is say male head dot set active true. And then we do the same thing for the female head. And you might be asking, well, why are we enabling both? And that's because the way we're going to set up our system is we're only going to have the male or female master object active at one time. So you can enable or disable children, children objects and it won't matter. Uh, so again, dis or enable all of the male and female objects here. Um, and then depending on which master object you have enabled, it won't matter regardless. So I'm going to delete that piece of code here, or pseudo code, sorry, and uh, just put that up here. So it's like a comment, enable the head object, and then enable any facial features. Cool. Now let's make one for disable head too, because we're going to need to use that as well when we put on any full face equipment, like a full helmet. So we're going to disable the male and female head, and then we're going to disable the male and female eyebrows. And also the hair should be done here too, but that has its own function, so that's okay. 
So disable head object, disable any facial objects, eyebrows, lips, nose, et cetera, et cetera. And enable hair. We don't have this yet, but we just want to make a hair game object. I'm actually gonna make that right now and then set active true. So again, the hair should be ideally in a master game object where all the children are the different hair components, but you can also toggle them all off simultaneously. That will be an ideal setup, especially for a system like this. So I'm going to make a header called hair object, gonna make a serializable public game object uh, variable here for hair. Again, this is the master, uh, you could say quote unquote game object, and all of the children objects are the individual hair pieces you could have. Hair dot set active false, or true, sorry. This will be enabling any hair. And then what you wanna do in a character creation screen is obviously you set active the hairstyle you want and disable the rest. We've covered that in a video before, but we're gonna recover it in this series again. So hair dot set active true, then hair dot set active false. And now we can go back to our player equipment manager and we can delete our uh, comments here. And we still need to add the player body manager variable to the player manager script. So let's go to the player manager. Let's make a hide inspector because we don't need to see that public player body manager and then call that on awake by saying player body manager equals get component player body manager because it does rest on the same game object as the player manager. All right, cool, save that, go back. Looking real good. Uh, let's go back into the project here now and I'm gonna drag in my default head, which for me is character male head zero zero. That's under uh, male head all elements because no elements is full helmets. All helmet, all elements is your default heads. And again, for my, the male body is gonna be the male upper body zero, and then the upper uh, right and left arm zero as well. This is just what it is for my model. Obviously, if you have a different model, it may be different. You might have your arms all as one object, whereas in this model, it is divided into upper, lower, and hand, which in my opinion is definitely a bit more ideal for sure. So do the same thing for the arms. The arms in my case will be the lower arms of both the left and right, and then the hands of both the left and right. And then finally, the legs would include the hips, which for me is male hips zero zero, and then the left and right leg on both. Okay, cool, and then the eyebrows and such are pretty self-explanatory. I will drag those in real quick though too. So male eyebrows is male eyebrows. Uh, male facial hair is male O2 facial hair for me if you have that as well. I'm gonna drag in the female off video, so I save you guys some time. There we go, save that. Jump back into the player equipment manager. Let's go over to our load head equipment. So right here, we need to check for disabling hair and stuff. We need to make a new equipment type. So right under on our, this is on our enums uh, script, by the way, we need to make a public enum head equipment type. So why do we need this? Well, I'm gonna give you some notes here and show you why. So we have three types of helmets primarily, full helmet. And then we have, I'll call this a hat. And then we have a hood. So we also have a face cover in some circumstances too. So I guess four technically, uh, what is a full helmet? Well. You're gonna hide the entire head and the features. The hat is not gonna hide anything. And then the hood is gonna hide your hair and the face cover is gonna hide your beard. So these are just basically little uh, markers to let us know what we need to hide when equipping the helmet. Next, go to your head equipment item uh, script. This is an armor type and make a public head equipment type variable called head equipment type. Now we can assign one of those for all of our head equipment in the game. And now we can do a, uh, a little switch here statement and go through every possible type and then depending on that type, we disable certain parts of our character's body. So in the event that the type is a full helmet, for example, we would want to disable the entire head and the hair. So let's just go up here and then right under here, we can just say player dot player body manager. And then you could say disable hair and disable head. And it's just that simple. And now for hat, you don't want to disable anything, or maybe you do, but in my case, I don't, so we're cool. Now for hood, I am gonna to want to disable my hair, and for face cover, I want to disable my beard. We don't have a, a function for that, but you know, let's just go make it right now while we're here. Disable facial hair, it's not real yet. Let's go to the player body manager. Uh, right below disable hair, I'll have disable facial hair, and I'll make a variable for facial hair. We'll do the same thing. I'll make one for enable facial hair as well. Get it all done before I forget. So change hair to facial hair. This is not gonna be applicable if you're using the same model as me, if, if you're using the female, obviously, but unless you wanna put beards on a female, it'd be kinda of cool. Uh, we're gonna go up here, right below hair object, facial hair, there we go, save. Now I'm gonna drag it in here and we are good to go. Also dragging your hair, uh, if you're using the same model, it's under all gender parts, all O1 hair. Again, ideally, it has to be a master object with all of the individual hairs underneath it. So if you disable that master object, they are all disabled. Now I'm gonna rename my helmet to open face helmet and change it to a hood. 
And I'm going to change the model on this. I got it called Knight's Helmet Model B. I'll change that to, uh, we're gonna give it a name. Let's, so first, change it to a hood as well. This is important. And now if I go back into my all head coverings, no hair. So let's look for an open face helmet so we can see. I want to use a full helmet and an open face helmet to make sure both are working as intended. So I'm just going to look through these real fast. That's like a peasant hat. It's like a chain. There we go, this one. So number 11. So I'm going to copy this here now uh, because this is the name of the model. I'm going to go back to my helmet and get the model data. So it's called Knight's Helmet B. Um, just so it's less confusing here. Now again, make sure this is on hood. I'm going to paste this here. You could also make the model data names, the names of the actual model. It's it's like if I just copy and paste this here, like you could call it open face helmet or you could call it character head coverings, no hair 11. I feel like that makes more sense. Um, and then I'm going to also grab one for the Knight's helmet model, uh, the full helmet. I'll use this one here. So paste that name. Uh, now this one is different for the female because it's not male, it's female, but the other one is general. So it's the same regardless of uh, if it's a male or female model. That looks good. All right, now I'm gonna make sure these pieces of armor data are in the right. Yep, that's good. That's good too, it's a full helmet, cool. All right, now let's go back into the player equipment manager. Let's go to load model, uh, and then let's go down to our switch statement. You can see we've only done full helmet so far. Again, this is on equipment model, our script. So we wanna do the same thing here for every other um, equipment model type. So open helmet, hood, I'm gonna change this to hat, by the way, I'm just gonna rename that real quick. So all we're doing is searching the relevant array and we're checking for a model with the same name as the variable we have on this equipment model script and then we're activating it. So, oh, is this a hat? Okay, let's check for all the hats. Is the model name the same? Check, okay, cool. Now, if I go into the game here now, when that's all done, um, and if I go down to equip new items, you can see, yep, okay, the helmet does come off. I got nothing on, that's working as intended. Now, if I quit the Knight's Helmet, yes, that's working as intended. And now if I go down to the open full helmet and equip it, it is not working, so I've forgotten something. Oh, right, we need to go to Awake on the Player Equipment Manager. We didn't actually populate our lists. So you can see here, or our arrays rather, we have a list of male full helmets and we're getting every child transform object in the male full helmet uh, transform. And then we're changing that list to an array and that's how our array is being created. So I'm gonna save you guys some time again and just do the same thing for all of our variables that we've just made. So the right legs, the hips, the lower arms, the right arms, all the general objects. You just wanna do the exact same thing we've done with the original male full helmets. You wanna make that list. You wanna get uh, the list populated by using child objects of a specific transform variable that we have saved here. And then you wanna change that list to an array and that is the process every single time here. And if you want to too, you can also make it its own function, kind of like how we have initialized weapon slots there. You could say like initialized armor models, so it's not all on awake. That's entirely up to you. I think it's a bit neater to do it that way for sure. Um, but the process is, is exactly the same. Obviously the more models you have and the more different um, uh, variables you have here, it's just gonna be a bit more crowded and there's a lot more to do. But now if I go back into the game again and I switch back on my Knight's Fool helmet and then I go to my open face helmet, my voice is still a bit shoddy, sorry about that guys. You can see here, it is working as intended. There it is, looking really good. Looking kind of creepy actually. The Cinti model eyes kind of wig me out a little bit. All right, so low body equipment. Let's do this one now, and then I'm going to turn it over to you guys to do the last two yourselves before I show you them. So let's make a function for unload body equipment models. What are we doing first? Well, the first thing we do obviously is we unload the old models. So we're gonna call unload body equipment models. And you know what, we can copy and paste everything from the load head equipment uh, function, we're just gonna change a couple things because this one's more simplistic than the head equipment. There's no special checks for like, you know, have to check in for a hood or a, a full helmet. So what we need to do is change the head equipment ID to body equipment ID. Uh, inventory manager head equipment equals null becomes inventory manager body equipment equals null, obviously. And just wherever you see head equipment, replace it with body equipment, um, pretty standard stuff. You can delete the switch statement, we don't need it. There's no special checks here, unless you have some for your model in particular, that's the place to do them. And then down here, you just change body equipment uh, or head equipment to body equipment again, and we are good to go. Now, unload body equipment models. I populate this already. You can see here, we're checking for shoulder, elbow, right knee, left shoulder, and we're disabling all these models. Oops, I have a couple here I don't need. Let me delete those real quick. So um, that looks good. Don't I don't need hip accessories. I can delete that. And I don't need, yep, that's good. So. Right shoulder, right elbow, left shoulder, left elbow, back accessories, male bodies, uh, upper and right arm and left arm, and then the female versions of that too. Uh, disable all those objects and then go to player, player body manager, enable body. This doesn't exist yet, so let's go make that. 
The same thing as enable head. Uh, it works the exact same way. You can see here now, there's a trend here, right? We're, we're equipping, we're unequipping all old armor and then we're re-equipping quote unquote, our default body models. So enable body, what do we do for this? Let's make a, a few for each loops. We're going to go and say for each model inside female body and male body. We're just going to simply model set active true. That's it. And that's, it's just that simple. All right, cool. So after you're searching through all these models and disabling them, uh, or enabling them rather, you don't need to make one for a disabled body because remember when we unequip a body model, we're doing that already. Um, so you don't require that function if you don't want it. Now I am going to go to my Knight's chest plate and I'm going to make a couple new equipment, uh, model assets here. We call this Knight's chest for now. And the type obviously is going to be torso. And then we're going to make a few more. I'm going to do shoulders and uh, upper arms is what we're going to require for this and the chest. Now you can add a back attachment if you want. You can add some elbow pads, um, whatever you feel like doing. You can put as many models on this as you would like to. I'm just going to do a few to make sure we got a working example here. So where is the shoulder or upper arm? There we go. So we got the left and right upper arm. Uh, the chest, I'm just going to duplicate these again, and I'll change this to elbow. We'll do elbows too. We'll do elbows, shoulders, upper arms, and the torso. So everything but the cape, really. So we got left arm, we have right arm, right elbow, and left elbow. And again, make sure all of your equipment model types are properly labeled. That's important. Otherwise, you won't get them uh, loading into the correct place. And then you'll have potentially an arm or an elbow missing. I mean, you'll know, I've done it before too. It's sometimes you're making dozens of armor models. It's really easy just to forget to do it for a couple and you load in and there's just an arm missing. So shoulders, we're good to go. Now let's go and select some. I'm just going to use what's already been on the model for the example to save some time, but definitely encourage you to uh, uh, play around with it a bit. And if you have your own model, and you're making an armor, that's, that's awesome and the way to do it for sure. In Nephilim, we use a mixture of some armor models on the asset store and a lot of ones that are custom made as well. All right, I'm going to paste these in here and make sure you change, if you're using the same model as me, uh, male to female in the female variable uh, and have you have male in the male variable section. And for shoulders and elbows, it doesn't matter because these are general and shared. All right, looks good. Now just the elbows. I'll grab these real fast, paste these here. And I think I have everything. No, I'm missing an elbow here. All right, cool. So depending on your project too, you may want to like, I don't know if you want to make armor its own and think it's entirety, like instead of having legs, you could just have an armor uh, section, kind of like what Diablo 2 and Skyrim does. They have boots and armor instead of like chest armor and leg armor. But that's entirely up to you. I'm going to lock in uh, the inspector here now and drag in all of these models under the knight's armor. So it has the chest and the shoulders, the elbows, et cetera, et cetera. Now remove this if null statement for load body equipment on our debug equip new items function under the player equipment manager. And I'm just going to copy all of this again, like before. Um, and I'm just going to do all of these real fast. Like I said before, these variables where I'm, I'm populating these lists and arrays, because right now all we have is the hoods and the full helmets. And we're going to need the bodies, elbows, shoulders and upper arms for this to work. So again, all you want to do is grab it from that one transform, make a list, and then change the list to an array after you've grabbed all of the objects here. So you can copy and paste most of this. And there we go. I've snapped back and done this off video to save us some time. But you can see here, I have all of the variables need the hips, the legs. If you just want to pause the video and you want to take a look at mine here too, uh, that's cool. I've done the the half helmets, whoops, that should be hats. Got to rename that again too. Uh, hats, hoods, face covers, uh, helmet accessories, back accessories, that would be the capes. I've just done it all here just to save some time. It is exactly the same as we've set up before. So I just didn't want to waste some time and go over this for like 15 minutes, save some time in the video. But again, I'm just going to go down through here. So if you want to pause, go for it. Um, now back over on the equipment model script again, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm not going to do this all in video. I'll just do a few and I'll snap back just to save us some time. You want to do your helmet accessories, face cover, torso, back, shoulder, etc., etc. It's the exact same thing we've done before. Just make sure you check the right array. So helmet accessories, I'm going to check the helmet accessories array, obviously. Face covers, I'm going to check the, what did I call that? I believe I'm going to just call that, yeah, the face covers array. Uh, torso, I believe I call that, this is under the male uh, functionality. So I would have to check the male bodies array. 
because again, you can see here, this is load male model. If you were loading female model, you would check the female body's array. Uh, back is general, so it doesn't matter. That's gonna be back accessories. And then right shoulders are also general. Uh, right upper arm is general. So you don't need to check for any kind of special list. It's just, it's its own thing every time. This is, again, assumes you're using the same model as me. Of course, yours might be different. All right, so I've snapped back, it's all done. And you can scroll up here, you can see all these are accounted for. And oh, I did forget one, I forgot hats. I'll quickly do that right now. So we're just gonna check the array for hats. And if the model.gameObject name equals the variable, then we just enable it. So if I go into the game here now and start it up, I'm gonna go to my character and I have no model equipped. So if I equip items, it should just take off my helmet and my chest. Yes, it does, cool. Now, if I go and equip a helmet, it should be the Knight's Will Home. Yes, it is. And if I go and equip the open face helmet, it should be open face. Yes, it is. And if I equip the Knight's Armor, it should equip shoulders. Yes, elbows, chest plate, and the upper arm. So there you go, guys. Very much so further along in our armor system. Now, I encourage you, with the knowledge you have, to go and do the hands and the legs yourself. You have the framework now. You know what to do. All the logic is there. So go ahead and do that. In the next video, we're going to conclude that, and we're going to move on to something else. So thank you very much for watching. Now, this is the part where normally I would tell you guys to have a great weekend, but this is an edit afterwards because I went out of town last weekend and forgot to upload the video. So I'm uploading on Sunday. So I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you very much to my patrons for continually supporting the series and this channel. It is genuinely because of you all I get to keep doing this, and I love doing this. So again, you have my thanks. I'll see you guys in the next one.